Good morning, church family, and uh, our afternoon or evening, whenever you're watching this. My name is Kenna McKee, and I'm here today to do the Devo with you. Um, so before we get started, let's go ahead and go before the Lord. Lord, we just ask that you would open up our hearts and our minds just to you, that you would um, just share your peace with all of us in whatever season we are in. In your most precious name, amen. All right, so as um, I've maybe kind of shared before, is in ladies' Bible study, we're studying the Lord's Prayer right now. So that's still where I am. And although I've kind of done a study like this or a Devo like this, I'm, I'm bringing it back because in lesson four, um, we just had a really good um, study. It was holy, hallowed be the name. So we were just, holy is your name, studying the names of God again. And just reminding us who we are, who he is, who we are in him and who we're praying to, because we all get so, and that's what kind of brought me to this message is as you know, we're here at church and with each other, we kind of hear heartaches are out in the world. You know, I have friends that have, have lost family members or lost their jobs or, just going through a hard, um, a hard time or just life in general. It's, you know, things happen or as we grow older, COVID or not, our health deteriorates, things happen. And so just listening to, to people and come to you with their hearts request and can you pray for, for this situation or that situation? And sometimes it's easy to get caught up in the circumstance and forget not that we forget who the creator is, but we, we let the problem be, become bigger than who God is. And so that's where I'm just going to share with you, um, literally straight from my Bible study. So I'm going to be reading these names and I'll have a lot of verses. I'm not sure if, um, our super awesome tech guy will be able to put them all in there. Not because he's not able. I just don't know if there's enough time or whatever it is. So, um, but if if he does, we're going to give him a round of applause right now. But if not, he still gets it for doing a great job. So anyway, so let's go ahead and get started. So the first name of God, who we're praying to, who we're taking our request to. Yahweh, I am, Genesis 2, 4. With the name of God, God reveals that he is self-existent, no beginning, no end, all of God's names stem from his work, except this one. This is the name that fully expresses God's being. God just is. He's everything. Um, Elohim, creator, Genesis 1.1. This is the name that reveals God to us at the beginning of time. Not his beginning, for Elohim has always existed and time is a part of his creation. God wasn't just hovering out in space, he created space too. God transcends time, space, matter. Elohim is plural name indicating the triune nature of God. This one is my favorite. And forgive me if I say it wrong. El Shaddai. It's C S H A D D A I, God Almighty, Genesis 17, 1. The Lord used the name when he made the covenant with Abraham. It expresses God's ultimate power and unfailing faithfulness. Nothing is too hard for God, and he always keeps his promises. Isn't that a blessing? God is the one and true only promise maker and promise keeper. So, and obviously these are, I'm not reading the verses, just the verses that um, explain the name and then there's the side notes. So I just don't want to confuse anybody. Um, Adonai, my Lord, 2 Samuel 7, 18. The name recognizes God's rule and divine ownership. He is Lord of all and takes loving responsibility for the care and well-being of his servants and his creation. And I was reading 2 Samuel 7, 18, and, you know, Samuel's going before the Lord, who am I and who am I that you've, you kept me in this place, so to speak, but just, he's kind of asking what I got from, you know, is God, you've just protected me and, and who am I that you would do all this for me? And it just, um, that really blessed me. And 
the Lord does that because we're his and he wants to protect us and, and, um, <clears throat> and maybe in protecting us doesn't always mean a comfortable situation, you know, but just knowing we're his and, um, he takes lovingly, loving responsibility for the care and well-being of his servants and his creation. And that's us. So Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, our provider, Genesis 22, 14. We're familiar with Abraham's test of obedience and how the Lord blessed him for holding nothing back. God saw and God provided. Um, and also that's just another blessing I know just with things in life, whether it be finances or health, or even sometimes some of our family members, when we're just give them to the Lord, like just complete, because it's his anyways, there's nothing that we have. It's easy to say, Oh, this is my son. This is my money. This is my home. This is my church. No, it's not my anything. It's God's son. It's God's church. It's there's God's blessings, you know? So, um, <clears throat> just reminding us that everything is God's and he's such a great provider for us in the things that we need. Uh, Jehovah Saba, T-S-A-B-A. Uh, we just uh, looked up how to say that and I think I already said it wrong, but anyhow. <laughs> the Lord, our warrior, 1 Samuel 17, 45. This is the name that God invoked when he fought Goliath. Perspective is everything. David saw Goliath's size, but his focus was on the king of the universe, mighty in power. David habitually kept a sense of awe for God and his glory, and that cut his enemy down to size. And isn't that the truth? I, as I was just kind of sharing, sometimes we let the um, circumstance become bigger than the creator, than the one who's actually in charge. Uh, Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our healer. Exodus 15, 25 and 26. The name refers to God's healing of infirmities of the body, mind and spirit. The Israelite situation at Moriah points to an important truth that God not only heals, but also has a purpose for our pain and our problems. And that's a little bit of a harder one to swallow, but just knowing he's in charge of our health. He's in charge of every single one of our days, our breaths here on earth. And when we just know that, that he is lovingly taking responsibility for every circumstance in our life. I think it just brings a lot of peace when we go to pr go to prayer, go to him in prayer about things, just remembering who he is. And I think a lot of times, um, not, I think I know a lot of times when I go and I'm praying to him about different situations and I'm so caught up and my stomach is hurting and I'm just so sad. I just remind myself who he is, what has he really done? And it's just praying, reminding myself in prayer who he is and all those things. And it just, it brings all these circumstances, um, back to a place where they belong. They don't deserve to rule my life. Jesus deserves to rule my life. So, um, and my kind of side notes were all, all these, all those, um, names that I just, um, shared with you guys. It's a sweet reminder and knowing God is always in charge of our life and he's over every single situation that we are in. So I just hope that encourages you guys today. Just, um, instead of focusing on your problem or whatever go is going on, focus on who God is because he's the only one who's truly in charge. So thanks for being with me and I'm going to go ahead and close in prayer. Lord, we thank you that you are truly in charge. It doesn't matter who sits on, um, on any seat, in any in reign of power here on earth. Lord, you are the only one truly in charge. We thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for the protection over our lives. And I just ask that you be with all of my brothers and sisters today. Help them to remember who you are and your true divine power, Lord. We love you and we thank you for this time. In your most precious name, amen.